Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Thomas Rotherham College. From now on, we'll just call it TRC. My name's Joel Worth, and I'm the head of college here at TRC. We'd like to welcome you to our virtual open evening. We're really, really sad not to be able to welcome you here in person so that we can show you ourselves in our full Hogwartsy splendour, but we hope that this evening you'll get the opportunity to see something of what we are as a college and why it's the right place for you for next year. During the course of this evening, you'll be able to see lots and lots of members of staff and hear from different areas of the college about everything that makes us such a special place to be. So, from me, welcome to Thomas Rotherham College. There are many reasons to choose TRC. You ask our students, they'll tell you it's a very different environment from the school environment you might have been used to. Here you will get some freedom, you'll get treated as an adult, and you'll be given responsibility and shown how to use it. It's just part of much of what makes Thomas Rotherham College such a special place to be. Of course, you can ask Ofsted if you like. Ofsted came to here a year ago and they told us the same thing. They told us this is a college where students are well cared for, where they're well taught, where they're well looked after, and they're driven to achieve the very best that they can in their life. To many of you, this will be what Thomas Rotherham College means to you. We have been on this land for many, many years, and as a college we've existed for nearly half a millennium. 500 years of service to this community. Of course, that doesn't make us what we are. What makes us what we are is this, is Rotherham, is South Yorkshire, is you. Our commitment to you, to this community, is restless, is ceaseless. It is what we do, it is what we stand for. What keeps Thomas Rotherham College vital and vibrant and serving this community is our absolute appreciation and understanding that we do what we do for you, for your futures, for your family, for your community. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's taken me a while to come down off the top of the tower, but I'm delighted to be here in TRC uh, and to welcome you to our virtual open evening. Um, this is really strange, and we do apologise that under the current circumstances, we can't welcome you into college. This is a night when normally we would be bustling with people, thronged with students and with guests as well. Uh, and instead, there are a small number of us in the Learning Resource Centre here at TRC talking into webcams. We hope you manage to avoid all of the glitches and other IT issues that sometimes these events are prone to. And we hope we do you proud and give you as much information as possible about Thomas Rotherham College and everything it means to be a student here. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of how, about how the evening is going to work. We've, we've kind of concocted artfully between ourselves a sort of a question and answer session. So I will be introducing you to some of the key senior leaders in the college. and I'll be bringing them on to another camera, which will open up shortly, so that you can hear from them about some of the most important considerations that we have no doubt you will have when you're thinking about where you should be coming for your sixth form provision. Uh, we've kind of done a, a sort of a best hits, the greatest hits of all of the previous open evenings we've ever had. And hopefully that will give you a really good overview of what it means to be a student here. Obviously, as I said in the introduction, we are gutted that we can't welcome you onto the site itself because an awful lot, and if you, you know, if you know Rotherham well and you know South Yorkshire, an awful lot about what makes TRC so special is the physical environment of the building. It's not just the tower and the castle on the front, it's all of the resources that we've got and all of the wonderful provisions that we're able to make for students here. And much like buying a house, Part of choosing a sixth form provider is being able to visit somewhere and see yourself there and to talk to students and to talk to staff and to understand fully what it means to become part of our broader community and to become a learner here. Um, so what's tonight about? Tonight is all about you as students. Uh, we want you to get as much information as possible. We'd like to do that in as interesting and dynamic a way as we can. If this was our normal open evening, that experience would involve you walking the building and talking to students and talking to teachers, and it would probably take you about an hour and a half. Um, we've kind of, uh, we, we've kind of, even unrehearsed as we are, we think we've probably got about 30 to 35 minutes worth of our best material, which we've got ready for you this evening. Uh, hopefully within that time, you'll have the opportunity to have some of your questions answered. And you might well be aware um, on the left hand side of your screen, if it's similar to mine, is the provision for you to ask questions. And I'll go through a little bit more later on as to exactly how that might work. 
Okay, so this is all about you students. Um, if, like me, my daughter is currently in exactly the same situation as you looking for a sick phone provider. So uh, if you're sitting around the kitchen table, your mum or your dad might be with you. Maybe your grand's even decided to, uh, to, to chip in as well. So this is also partly for you parents and indeed grandparents. Um, I've got great sympathy for your parents because like you, you know, I have felt the stretching of the umbilical cord over the course of a child's education. You know, in year two, you went into the classroom with them. By year five, you were waiting outside the gate. In year seven, you had to let go a bit. And by the time they're standing on the brink of year 12, you're probably feeling very marginalized from this whole process. We don't want that to be the case at all. And we want you to rest assured that some of the considerations you will have as parents in making and, and helping supporting your child, still a child just about, to make the decisions that they're about to make, you are important players in that and you're an important element of everything that we try and achieve at LRC. So I want you to feel that you're involved too. And I would urge you particularly when you meet some of the senior leaders later on to listen to what Andy Amory has to say about what support is like. And he will address in particular uh, some of the elements uh, that parents will be interested in. Um, where do we find our success as a college? We'll touch on this throughout this evening. Um, I'm very keen uh, as a senior leader here that we are not seen uh, as a castle on a hill that stands on our reputation, centuries long reputation, um, and simply swallows 800 students a year and then dutifully churns out two years later some university ready 18 year olds. That is not who we are. You know, we, you will know the excellent academic reputation we've got in this community, but our strength really is based on the fact that we know our students. We are a large provider, but that size is our strength. Uh, it means that we are able to offer truly wraparound care and support as well as academic challenge and outstanding teaching. It means that when it comes to resources that can support students in whatever phase of their life they're at, whatever problems they're facing, we have got the facilities and the resources and the human power to deal with those issues. So you might think, parents, that your child will come to college and they will attend lessons and you will hear very little about it. That's not the case at all. And you might worry that your students will come to college and will simply be, if you like, a number on a spreadsheet. That's not the case at all. They will develop very close working relationships with their teachers, with their tutors and with the host of other people who we've got at college to help support them with the counsellors, with the learning support assistants, with the work placement, with the whole host of people who work here. And it's really important to us that at the end of this evening, you've got a very clear sense of how that will work for you. There is not a chance that we'll be able to tell you everything this evening. You will have many questions of your own and we don't want to go through all of those individually. We'd like this to be a very general introduction to what life is like at TRC. Um, there will be an opportunity, as I say, for you to ask questions. Um, and if there are individual questions that you don't feel it's right to ask now, and that could be about very personalised support, like what support for learning is like, please do contact us through the website. Uh, I'm more than happy for you to email me directly and we will answer those questions. You will get some copies of the email addresses later on in this evening. If there is information that we don't provide you with, there will at the end of this presentation be a link to the college website where you'll be able to pick up an awful lot of the information about particular courses. And I would urge you to have a look at that. We are the largest provider of A-levels and level three BTECs in the area. And it's important that you make the right choices and you think early about what those choices might be. And some of that and some of the support, excuse me, <clears throat> that we can offer with that includes our careers service. Uh, I'm, I'm aware of the fact that uh, in five minutes, there's another session uh, that's running, which is our careers session. Um, if you've booked in to attend that session, you'll need to step out of this one and step into the career session. There you will be able to, after a short talk, um, a short introductory talk, ask some very individualized questions if you've got any questions about specific university courses or future plans that you've got. Okay. Now you're going to be really delighted to know that I'm going to stop talking at that point and I'm going in to introduce some of the members of the senior leadership team to you. So this is going to be a really smooth and slick handover now. Someone is going to turn on a distant webcam and as if by magic, a second screen is going to appear and look at that. 
It's almost like this is slickly rehearsed. Um, I'm just going to introduce these people. Poor Andy is going to have to sit there for a while. Uh, that's not Mandy Bloor, can I just say, uh, which as that might have been the intention. This is Andy Amory. Andy is one of our assistant principals. He's in charge of pastoral care, which encompasses all of the sorts of elements of wraparound support and care um, that we uh, offer students. Um, when you get the opportunity to answer questions later uh, later on, Andy, when Andy reappears to answer those questions, would be the person that you would put them to. So please, if you do have questions like that, be prepared when you see him again, and he will be able to answer those, okay? Andy's gonna make way now in a smooth way. He's just gonna move out of screen there, and I'm gonna invite Dr. Chris Walls to come and sit there. Uh, Chris, like Andy, has been at TRC since sometime in the mid 1740s, and so the DNA of, uh, of TRC, it, it, he knows that better than most people. Um, I, I've had to write down Chris's full job description so that I can get it right for you. But in terms of this evening and questions you might have, Chris is the assistant principal who is in charge of curriculum, recruitment, that's you, enrollment, induction, interviews, all those sorts of things. If you've got any questions about that, Chris will answer some anyway, but you might want to ask them to him later on when again he reappears. He's done a really good job of sitting there and he's not normally that quiet as well, I can tell you. So I'm going to ask him to move out of the way. And then this is the last person now. It's not just going to be a kind of a strangely disappointing conveyor belt like in the generation game, one for the grandmas there. This is Mandy Bloor. The name finally matches the face. Um, and this is the way that I'm going to suggest that we work this evening. Um, Mandy's going to stay on screen for a while now, and she's going to uh, answer some questions that I'm effectively going to put to her based on the sorts of questions that we get normally at open evening. Um, Mandy's a maths teacher as well. She's in charge of all sorts of things in college. She's in charge of teaching and learning. She's in charge of our gifted and talented program, our top program for more able learners. And as I say, a maths teacher. So if you have got any emergency simultaneous equations that need solving, you might want to put those to her as well. I'm sure she'll be only too happy to oblige. Now, uh, in terms of where we are, in terms of the sessions that we're going to be running this evening, this one I think is going to be the one that's of most obvious interest to the students. Um, because I'm going to ask Mandy in a moment to talk about life in college. Um, Mandy's joined us recently and has got extensive secondary school experience. And so she will understand exactly how that process works, from, if you like, from both sides, that she's got experience of recent experience of secondary school and also of a sixth form college. So she's ideally placed to be able to tell you all sorts of things about that. So Mandy... I'm going to ask you if you can, I'm, I'm going to ask a number of questions at the same time to avoid this because we have to change microphones over. It could get it could get ugly. Um, I'm going to ask Mandy if she can uh, tell you all about life at college, about the differences between uh, a college day and a, and a day at school, all of those differences, the, the way the similarities as well. She'll talk about all sorts of things like that, like lessons, like learning, and even if she gets around to it, like food as well. So I'm going to mute my microphone and pass you over to Mandy. Thank you, Joel. So I want to talk to you a little bit then about what college life is like. So in the same way as you do at school, you'll attend lessons for the courses that you're going to choose to study. You'll have lessons in a classroom, much like you do um, at school, but then you'll be given additional work to do outside of classroom time as independent study, much like you do homework. We have the same expectations here in that you work hard, you're a committed student and you conduct yourself in a mature and appropriate manner and attend all of your lessons. At college, we treat you with respect and we treat you like an adult. And in doing so, we don't require you to wear a uniform. So long as you're dressed appropriately for the courses that you take, you can express yourself and your own individuality. So what will a college day be like? We start at 9 a.m. We have built in breaks um, sort of in the morning and in the afternoon, and we've got a lengthier break in the middle for lunchtime. You don't have timetabled lessons all day, every day. So you will have some free periods built in throughout your college week. You'll meet lots of new people and make lots of friends on like-minded friends from courses that you take. What are lessons like? So lessons range in length, depending on the time of day that you have those. And uh, lessons are structured to give you all the opportunities to revise and recap previous skills and develop new skills and subject knowledge so that you can become successful and gain excellent qualifications. Our courses have a range of practical and written elements, and many courses are delivered through the use of computers. Teachers at the college are experts in their subjects, and they're eager to support you in your learning and to help you to make good progress. So what can you do when you don't have a timetabled lesson? So in a very different way to a school, 
when you don't have a lesson, you don't have to be on college site. That's your time for your independent study. We have beautiful grounds and you're free to stay and use the site and facilities that we have available. You may wish to do some independent study on site in our learning resources centre where we are tonight um, and also in the study area or in the canteen while sat with some friends. We do have computers available on site for use and we do have our own library. So the important question then, where can you get something to eat and drink? We've got a canteen and courtyard area which is situated at the centre of the college and our wonderful canteen staff serve a very uh, reasonably priced range of hot and cold food throughout the day, such as potatoes, uh, chips, sandwiches, cheesy chips is always a common one, and salads. In the morning, throughout the um, morning and the first break, we have a hot and cold breakfast buffet, serving everything from sausage sandwiches, pastries to fruit and cereal. Throughout the day, we also have a snack bar available, um, which you can use throughout. If you've got any more questions to do with college life, please just pop them on the chat at the side or ask Joel and then he'll pass those back to one of us and the part of the team. I'm going to pass you back over to Joel. Thank you. There you go. And I'm going to hope Mandy has muted her mic. And she has. That's fantastic. Thank you very much, Mandy. Now then, uh, Mandy has obviously done an outstanding job of it, telling you all about what college life is like. Uh, either that or nobody can think of any questions. If you do have any questions that you can think of, um, as I say, there's the potential and the facility for you to type those questions in on the left-hand side. They can be about anything. Uh, but seeing as there are none at the moment, Mandy's going to be so relieved. I'm going to let Mandy leave at that point. Okay, and I'm going to bring uh, Chris Walls back in, uh, just to remind you. So Chris is Chris is a really important figure for you all. Uh, thinking about coming to TRC because he oversees so much of the kind of like, if we call it the transition process and all the operational things that happen to do with applications and all sorts of things like that. I'm not going to get him to talk about the application process now because I think that's something that's probably le best left till later on. Um, but instead, we will do all the other stuff around what the kind of like the curriculum is like. Um, and I know that we always get lots and lots of questions about how many courses students can study and somebody's, you know, is, is really keen and they want to do five A levels or four A levels or they want to do two B techs and one A level and all those sorts of things. So I'm going to get Chris to talk about that. I'm going to get to talk about how, what kind of courses are available to you what are entry requirements like and what the timetable might be like as well and i can see some questions are coming through which is great but i'm going to mute my microphone for the moment and pass you over to chris okay hello everyone so i'll start off really with the number of courses that are available at college um, we've certainly got a, a wide range of courses over 50 courses really available to students at college uh, varying from a levels to other level three courses which are equivalent to B, uh, to A levels like BTECs and the criminology course, for example. And then we've got some GCSEs as well, in case your GCSE year this year doesn't go as well as you were expecting, there is a little bit of a safety net at college here for you. Okay, uh, most students will study three courses while they're at college, or the equivalent to three courses. So on some of our BTEC programmes, you can study them as either a single a double or a triple and the terminology around that just means that a single is worth is equivalent to one a level over the two years a double is equivalent to two a levels over the two years and then obviously the triple is equivalent to three a levels over the two years as i said most students will study three a level equivalents because that's what the university is looking for there is an option to study four uh, particularly if you're doing further maths uh, and um, we do allow this because some universities like you to have studied for if you've got further maths in your portfolio. The vast majority of, of universities, though, will make an offer based on three A-levels. So if you're looking at doing more than three A-levels, we will be asking why that is. Because you're generally doing that fourth A-level really for fun. Uh, and whilst it might be fun, it can distract you from your other A-levels and mean that you don't get the the same grades that you would get if you'd focused in on three but like i say it's not impossible it's just something that we would discuss with you at length okay um our class sizes is another question that we get we get asked quite a bit so our average class size is about 14 okay it will vary depending on what course you do so some of our what we class as minority courses like 
philosophy maybe or German or French, they will have smaller numbers. And then some of our more popular courses like psychology and criminology, they will have larger numbers. But the average class size is 14 and the maximum class size we've got one in this year is 24. Yeah, we normally top that off at 25 and don't go above that. So that gives you an idea of what the class sizes will be like when you come to college. Um, I'm just thinking what other questions I can answer for you. Can you mute your microphone for a second, Chris? Sorry, just mute my microphone a second. There you go, slick. Um, uh, I've got some really good questions. Thank you very much. Always be careful what you ask for because we have no questions and ask for some and then I've been inundated, which is great. So I'm going to just put some of these to Chris because Chris is the right person to answer them. So I've got questions, Chris, just to spring them all on you at once about what the interview process might look like. I've got questions about uh, entry requirements and the number of GCSEs that are required. So this is this would be very general. And I, I can say now ahead of Chris answering that the best source of information here is to go onto the website and to look at the individual courses. As I say, that's the section of the website that you'll be redirected to once we've finished um, this um, part of this evening. Um, so we have individual entry requirements for certain subjects and certain classes, but then there is a, a sort of like a baseline general entry requirements for the entire college. And I'm going to get Chris to talk about that, if that's all right. So talk about the interviews, Chris, talk about the GCSEs and talk about what a kind of like a daily schedule might look like for a student in terms of the lessons that they have. OK, thanks, Joel. So um, the interview process, it's unusual times i'm afraid so we're not we're not exactly certain what we're going to be really doing on the interview process certainly any interviews that we we will be doing will be later on in the year because we can't really do them at the moment uh, it may be that we can't do them at all i mean normally we would get students in let them have a look around college have a, a discussion with a member of the senior leadership team where we go over what subjects you're choosing uh, we call it an interview but it's it's really not an interview, it's a chat yeah, based on what you want and what we can provide and matching them up as best we can. So you've got a really good idea of what we can offer you as a college and then you can compare us to other providers. We are really happy to be compared to other providers. Yeah, it's all about the right person coming to college to study on the right courses. If we aren't the right college for you, we're not gonna try and talk you into coming. We want people at college to be happy and to be studying the courses that they want to study. Having said that, we set a bar to come into college. So uh, the general entry criteria for level three, and by level three, I just mean A-level and A-level equivalent, equivalent study, is five GCSE passes at grade four or above. One of those can come from a non-GCSE, like a BTEC, for example. Okay, And then we've got entry criteria for our level two. So if you have to reset your GCSEs, you need to get 16 points from six different subjects, including English and maths. And it's easy to work out your points because a four is worth four points, a five is worth five, a three is worth three. Yeah, so you can add those up and see how you go. Now, as Joel said, on top of our general entry criteria, some courses have individual entry criteria that you've also got to hit. These are all available in the prospectus, which is online. So I would encourage you to have a look at the prospectus and to see what those entry criteria are. With regards to what the college day looks like, again, that's a really interesting question uh, because due to COVID, we changed our timetable and we changed the way in which we deliver to the students. We've done that to minimize the amount of swap over between students. So basically we are much more of a COVID secure environment. In doing that, what we found is the students actually seem to really like the timetable that we've got at the moment. So we're currently reviewing that to see if that is the timetable we want to adopt going forward. But I can't, normally when people ask me, what would my timetable look like? I do a bit of a blue Peter and I say, well, here's one I prepared earlier and it's all coloured in. And I can say, look, you know, you get four and a half hours uh, teaching per subject. Everybody does three subjects. There's six spaces on your timetable, six blocks worth of space on your timetable. You're in three, which means for half your time in college, you are on study time and you can use that study time 
as you want. That won't change, but what will change or what might change is how we clump those time periods together. Uh, so at the moment, the students are doing larger clumps of time, which they seem to be really, really enjoying. And also we seem, we're finding that um, the engagement of the students within the lessons is even higher than it is normally. So we're hoping that it's going to have a very positive effect on our outcomes as well. I'll just mute and see if Joel wants me to talk about anything else. I'll just pass you back over. Sorry. I, I don't think I'm going to inflict that on anyone, Chris. I think they've heard they've heard enough there. Thank you very much for some of the questions. I don't know if Chris, you've been able to see some of them. I think I can pick up on them, but I'll leave you sitting there just for a second in case there's anything you want to say. So just uh, for some of the questions that you've asked, some of you have asked very specific questions about subjects like art and business and dance and the fact that you haven't done those at GCSE, but you'd like to do them at, uh, at A-level or BTEC, whichever one it is. Um, I think the general question, the general uh, answer to that is there are certain subjects where obviously you will have done a GCSE in them. So for example, you may have done, even if you've done combined science, if you get the entry requirements, you can go and do an A-level in chemistry, for example. But for some subjects, it's not, a, it's not an essential that you have done uh, a GCSE level. So certainly for art and for dance and for business, we wouldn't have expected you to have done that at GCSE. The broadest, the broadest way of answering that is that as a college, we would see it as our duty to try and facilitate you doing the subjects that you want to do. And we, will, we, we, we won't bend things like entry requirements. We will try and make that fit. One of the things that, uh, if, we just, if you'd have seen Chris three months ago, when he's in the, um, when he's in the middle of trying to make the timetable work, we, you know, once you've enrolled with us, he then has to make the timetable in a week, which is an incredibly quick turnaround. And he builds the timetable around the choices that you make to try and make them happen. So one of the big advantages I found about TRC, again, when comparing it to places my daughter's looking at, they've given her option blocks and said, if you can choose these, but they have to be in different blocks. And there are combinations of subjects that you just can't do. It's incredibly rare for us to be in a situation where your combination of subjects doesn't work. You can just nod your head to agree with that, Chris, if you want to. So there you go. Another advantage of being the size of provider that we are. Um, so thank you very much for that question. There's also a question about sports-based courses, which I think we'll probably try and answer separately, Mark, because that's quite, it's quite a niche question in some regards. And a really good question about the key attributes of a learner. I'm going to allow Chris to leave and bring Andy on while I answer that question, if that's all right. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, I, I, I really think it's I really think it's about you. It's about over the course of the next few months, really obviously concentrating in GCSEs, and that's going to be difficult enough in the current environment, but to be thinking about who you are and what you want to be in the future and to be uh, committed. Committed sounds like it means lots of different things to different people. To be committed to your own future, though, to be the kind of person that, that we, we will provide you with, and I think this will come through from tonight, opportunities to become the person that you are going to become opportunities that i can shamelessly tell you you won't get a sixth form school but you will get here to do with the kind of freedom and lateral leeway you're given and you will find out there an awful lot about who you are as a person and the students that really succeed at trc are the people who have got that within them to become that person it's a kind of a, it's a sort of a maturity and it's a sort of a resilience but as i say rest assured and i'm just going to talk about this as well almost a neat segue um there will be support there available for students who find that transition slightly more complicated as well right andy's been sitting there now he's done it really well uh, very patiently andy as well um thank you for the questions that you've asked about tutoring andy's going to answer the questions about tutoring because i know that's a very different setup than you might be used to certainly in a school and certainly if you've had any experience of school sick forms as well so i'm going to ask andy to talk about that i'm going to ask him to talk about support in general and also for the parents out there as well about what kind of like how, how we keep parents informed about how well students are doing okay thank you andy over to you Thank you, Joel. Um, I'm going to start off talking about general support that our students will receive in college. Um, some people think that because we're a big sixth form college that they don't get that individualised support um, and that couldn't be further from the truth. In your subjects, your academic teachers will be providing you with the subject based knowledge and there's going to be times when there are things that you don't grasp first time and that's perfectly normal, that's perfectly okay. And your subject teachers will go through um, the content with you on a one-to-one -one basis and in small groups 
to provide to provide you with that additional support so that you can move forward positively. So you're going to get that whatever subject you choose, whether it's A levels or whether it's B tech. Outside of the academic support, um, we've also got what we call um, class. Class stands for the Centre for Learning and Study Skills. We've got a qualified and excellent team up there um, who provide support uh, for what we refer to as your underpinning skills. So it's those skills which are going to help you to be successful on the courses that you're doing. Um, and very often it might be that you require essay writing skills support. You might want help with sentence structure. It might be about helping to uh, decode some of the vocabulary that you're introduced to in your new subjects. Um, and all of our class members work closely with your subject teachers to get a real understanding of the underpinning skills that are required. And they'll work with you on a one to one <clears> basis <throat> and in small groups to begin to address those skills. So, so you are equipped moving forward. In addition, there are a number of students who will disclose a specific learning difficulty or disability. Um, that could be dyslexia, dyspraxia, it might be on the autism spectrum, there may be a particular health condition or a certain disability. And again, our class uh, staff will work with you to support you, to develop strategies and to help you to overcome any barriers to your learning so that you are making progress in line with your peers and the support up there really is excellent. I'm sure a lot of you will have seen that in society at the moment, there's a growth in mental health issues. Um, we certainly see students who come through our doors with anxiety and depression. Um, and the class and welfare team who work with those students, again, provide some really good support along with the counsellors in a friendly, confidential um, and supportive way. Um, anybody that does have um, a learning difficulty or disability can declare that as part of the application process um, and share that with a member of the enrolling team. Um, I'm going to move on to look at the support that our tutors provide now. Um, I think that our progress tutors provide a real pivotal role uh, in your time at college. Yes, I've said that you're going to get an academic subject teacher. Um, but you're also allocated a progress tutor and they've got an overview of your performance. They've got an overview of your attendance, your punctuality, and they'll meet with you on a regular uh, basis. Uh, so you'll have one to one meetings um, with your tutor and they'll have conversations with you about what's going well, what needs to improve. Um, are there any specific skills or support needs uh, that might need addressing? Um, and as I say, that happens on, on a regular basis throughout the year. And your progress tutor can signpost you to, to various support, whether that's back into subject-based academic support or to, or to some other learning support. Um, it's easy, I think, sometimes to think that we're a, an exams-driven college. Yes, of course, exams are, are really important. After all, they open the doorways to all the things that you're going to do in the future. But I think we've also got a duty um, to ensure that our students leave TRC as well-rounded individuals going out there with a positive attitude, a critical mind, being, you know, not being afraid to challenge things, have developed a clear sense of values and, and can go on and play a positive role within society and the local and national economy. So in order to support that, we've got a tutorial program that is balanced and will deliver content at themes and issues that are very much targeted at your age group. At the moment, we're doing these online because of the current COVID situation. Under normal circumstances, uh, we have done them in the classroom. And as Chris has said, we'll see what happens in the future in terms of the delivery model. Um, one of the big roles that our progress tutors play is in supporting you into your next destination. And, and for 70% of our students, that will be looking at university. So they will guide you through the application process. They will support you in the writing of personal statements and help you look at the different universities and entry requirements so that 
you are equipped to make that application as easily and smoothly as possible. Of course, not everybody goes to university. Um, those that choose not to go down that pathway and choose a different pathway, whether that's employment or apprenticeships, um, can benefit from our job ready program. And again, here our progress tutors will work alongside our careers team and our work placement team to equip you with the skills required for employment and, and the application process um, for employment itself. So I think if I was summing up what our progress tutors do in terms of support, they support you with a, a compassionate rigor, compassionate in that they understand the things that you're going through as a 16 to 18 year old student. They understand the barriers and the hurdles sometimes that you need to get over. But equally, they do that with a rigor because after all, yes, we want you to reach your potential and we want you to be the best that you can be. I'm going to move on just to mention um, parents and the communication that we have with, with your parents uh, and carers. That partnership is really important to us. Um, I spend quite a bit of my day on the telephone speaking to parents, um, talking about progress, attendance or any issues that, that might have arisen that parents have phoned in and wanted to speak to me about. Um, the majority of parents in my experience really welcome a phone call and they really welcome that chance to have a conversation about how well you're doing. And we offer that on an ongoing basis throughout the year. We monitor your academic progress, of course, throughout the year. Um, and we record your performance grades three times a year. We report these to parents and we invite parents and carers into parents' evenings in order to have a conversation about that. Um, as Chris has said, under the current conditions, how we organise our parents' evenings is a little bit up in the air, but we will certainly make sure that that communication continues. A lot of students ask about getting to TRC. Um, because the college draws from quite a wide area, a number of our students will travel in on public transport. So our students are entitled to a discounted rate for travel on buses and they can obtain a pass. That entitles you to travel anywhere in South Yorkshire, uh, according to the Travel South Yorkshire website for 80 pence um, and half price on Northern Rail trains as well. Details of how to um, get one of those passes is available either at our student services or on the Travel South Yorkshire website itself. We've also got a number of dedicated TRC buses um, that travel students in, bring students in um, from our outlying areas. And again, the details of the particular routes, the details of the pickup points can be found on our website. Um, and a final thing on buses, for any of you who would be travelling in by bus, um, if you're coming into the Rotherham interchange, then we run two buses on a morning and on an afternoon that take you directly up to the college. Um, just going to kind of interrupt there, Andy, and ask you to mute your microphone for a second. Okay. Is that right? Just uh, really conscious of time because we've got about five minutes left. Um, uh, and, and I've got a number of questions that I think it's worthwhile addressing. So thank you, Andy. If you've got any further questions that you think Andy might uh, be well to, good to answer, then if you start dropping them in down here. Uh, if not, Andy, it's all right if you want to turn your, if you want to turn your camera off. He's sitting over there on my side. Um, and then we'll uh, I'll try and deal with some of these questions because there's some really important ones. So some of you are asking about how many lessons a, a week and what your working week will look like. And so I'll just race through those if that's possible, or these are quite important. Um, somebody has asked also whether this um, record recording will be available on the website. It will be, so if you think you've missed anything exciting, you'll be able to go back and look to your heart's content. Right, will students be in five days a week? Um, it's unlikely that you will be in every day on the version of the timetable that we're thinking of operating. Uh, I talked to one lucky student out on the front door duty earlier on today who, uh, who said she doesn't come in at all on a Friday and she doesn't come in at all on the following Monday. She has a four day weekend. Uh, I kind of looked slightly askance at her and she said, I'm obviously doing lots of work when I'm at home, which was a relief. Um, but you will probably find under various incarnations of the timetable that we run, and this is again very unlike a school which has to stick to the same kind of pattern of lessons that have run in year seven, eight and nine, is that you will almost certainly get more time um, 
not in college, you will get the same amount of teaching time as you would in a sixth form school, but you'll get time again. And that's part of that independent managing of time that you will have. Um, uh, so lessons at the moment, are, if I, I'm going to say something scary now, are two hours, 40 minutes long. There's a 10 minute break in the middle of that. Some of that is that is to make it college COVID safe. And that was the change that Chris talked about. Um, but actually staff and students are really enjoying those longer lessons because they think they get the opportunity to really get under the skin of subjects. So there's a good a possibility that you will get uh, uh, alternate in, in two week time to one lesson of two hours, 40 minutes one week or possibly three hours next year and then two lessons the following week. And that will broadly over start in per subject. So multiply by three subjects and that will broadly what your week will look like. OK. Um, some questions about what kind of combinations of subjects you can do. Can you do one A level, two B techs, all those sorts of things? I think I'm going to refer you to the prospectus, which is online, because it starts to get quite confusing at that point. Thank you ever so much for your applications. As I say, uh, I'm going to bring Chris back on in a second just to tell you how we go through the applications process. Uh, but just before we do that, um, I, we've got about three minutes left, and I just wanted to kind of like have a last minute uh, with you just to talk about. So why TRC? Why would it be? It's a big decision you're looking at. I'm sure, and, and it would be absolutely right if you were looking at lots and lots of different sixth form providers. So why would it be TRC? Um, we are unique. Uh, we are certainly unique. We are not a university, but we are very different from a school sixth form. Um, I think the conversations that I've had with uh, students who are here, and certainly with past students, is that we are a real preparation for the future because we offer students a supported space in which they can grow both as learners and as people. I think the important way to be thinking about what TRC is like versus a school sick form is we are not the final two years of a seven year journey that began in year seven. You know, we're not the final two years of a school secondary provision. We see ourselves very much as the first two years of a five year post 16 learning journey that you will go on. And that's really what we like to do. You know, whether it's university or whether it's into an apprenticeship or whether it's into the world of work, that's the world that we are supporting you and getting you ready for. Um, so what will it be like at TRC? Your days will be dynamic. They'll be interesting. They'll be engaging. They might even be fun sometimes. You will certainly, if you come here, feel more like an adult than you've ever felt at any stage, not just because you're older, but because of the unique things that TRC has to offer. Um, that's a promise that we can certainly make you. TRC stands ready. We've stood here on this ground for over 100 years, and we've stood here as an institution supporting Rotherham for half a millennium. Um, we stand here to do all that we've ever done, which is to transform you, your lives, the lives of, these, this, of this community. And we see it as our ambition to discover your ambition and to help turn those dreams into reality. Now, Chris, all this sounds far too good to be true. Uh, if I was inclined, having listened to such a, an interesting set of presentations as I've listened to this evening, to make a no commitment application to TRC uh, almost immediately, how would I go about doing that, Chris? Okay, Joe, thanks for that. Okay, uh, I would encourage everybody to put an application in. So if you look online uh, and you go onto our website, there's an apply now section. You just click on there and fill in the application. As Joel says, it's no commitment, which is the beauty of putting your application in. Okay, if you've not got an application in, then uh, and you change your mind towards the end of this year, maybe even uh, just after your GCSE results come out, you might be on a waiting list. Whereas if you've got an application in, uh, you won't be on a waiting list. You've, you've applied before the deadline. And so you've got your place basically provisional to your GCSE results. So if you look on our website and go to the apply now section, there's lots of sections for you to fill in, but they're all really basic and straightforward. Don't worry about the uh, GCSE profile that we're asking for. Um, if, you're in, if your current institution, your current school uh, haven't released any grades recently, just estimate. It doesn't really make much difference. All it is is so we've got an idea of roughly where your strengths and weaknesses are. So if we do have an interview process, we can talk to you about what subjects you're looking at and seeing if we can match up with your skills and your interests to the courses that we've got at college. Okay. Obviously, we're going to look at your real results when your results come out. And that's going to be the thing that's going to that you're going to sit down and have a discussion with another member of staff on enrollment 
and we'll talk through what subjects you're interested in, what subjects you'd like to do, look at the entry criteria, look at your GCSE profile and then match you up and create a prof um, an academic profile for you to study while you're at college. Is that okay, John? Yeah. Uh, that's perfect. Chris, and seeing as this session ends in about 30 seconds, it's absolutely, it's, it's seamless, I think we'll all agree. Um, so uh, at that point, it only remains for me to say thank you again for the, the hundreds of you who've attended this evening. That's been slightly intimidating. Thank you for your questions. They've been great. We will attempt to answer those. Um, we will attempt to answer those uh, even after the uh, recording has finished and get back to you. Uh, it only remains for me to say thank you very much for attending. Safe journey home. Be careful out there. It's getting dark. Uh, have a wonderful evening and we hope to hear from you soon.